Welcome to High Vibe Astrology. This is Jennifer with a video on the July 3rd Capricorn full moon. This is a very symbolic full moon at 11 degrees and 18 minutes. And I will address the numerology shortly. But overall, the energy dynamic at this full moon is about us coming into a higher level of emotional maturity. The Capricorn Cancer axis represents the parental dynamic in the zodiac wheel, Capricorn being the father or parent providing structure, Cancer representing traditionally the mother or the more nurturing parent or guardian. What makes this that much more important has to do with the fact that they are part of the cardinal cross in astrology, which will be greatly affected by the nodal shift in Aries Libra beginning on July 17 and transiting those signs for the next 18 months. And Aries and Libra represent the relationship axis of the zodiac, balancing self with others in our lives, whether it's business associates or a significant other. So if you have your sun, moon, or rising sign in any of these cardinal signs, then you will want to pay closer attention to this message. This full moon is basically preparing us for the nodes shifting into Aries and Libra, and that happens right after the Cancer new moon on the 17th. So when it comes to events that can wake us up or shake us up, just remember it's not life happening to us, it really is happening for us because it's revealing a pathway that we have not considered. And there may be certain foundations that need to go in order for us to find that new pathway. So it's revealing ways that the universe is asking you to upgrade your life, to literally, you know, put you on a new or higher evolutionary path. So I can give you one personal example. I have fixed signs in my chart, primarily Scorpio and Leo. And in 2003, when the nodes were last in the signs of Taurus and Scorpio, I had a lot of physical pain and this did come up suddenly. It was an old injury that was aggravated and um, I had a herniated disc and I was in a lot of pain, like excruciating pain, 24-7 for 18 months. So basically for the duration that those nodes were in Taurus and Scorpio. But it also had to do with a Uranus transit. Both Scorpio and Uranus rule Kundalini or life force energy. And when it wants to move, when it wants to upgrade our life, if there's anything, any patterns we're holding that are blocking that, then we're going to feel physical pain as that life force energy is trying to move. And in my case, Mars, the ancient ruler of Scorpio, was in the sign of Scorpio, transiting my first house, and it was forming a square to Uranus and Aquarius, transiting my fourth house. So this had to do with my relationship with self, first house, and my emotional foundation and security, fourth house. And there were changes that I had to make. So even though it was expressing itself in the physical body and creating a lot of pain, for me, it had to do with identifying emotional patterns and how I related or, you know, how I was not supporting myself. So during those 18 months, I sought help from fellow practitioners in massage, acupuncture, network chiropractic, and physical therapy. And I am so grateful that I had that support around me because I didn't want any kind of invasive surgery. And I was able to heal and able to identify those patterns that were not serving my own emotional security, stability, and happiness. But I had to determine, you know, I took that time to determine where and how I was still kind of enslaving myself, trying to fit into a way of being in the world that simply did not align with my higher purpose. So that is really the message I want to convey at this time as we finish up another round of Taurus and Scorpio and shift into the cardinal sign axis of Aries and Libra. At this Capricorn full moon, 
we are being provided with the opportunity to clean up any emotional habits. Cancer, which tends to hide in its shell when it feels threatened or hurt. And Capricorn, which in its low vibe tends to place priority on pragmatism and practicality at the expense of emotional expression. But these are the issues that we are all facing on some level, and especially those with the cardinal placements. And that brings me to the interesting numerology in this full moon chart with the sun and the moon at 11 degrees and 18 minutes. So if we just look at the degrees, we have 1111, and these are the numbers often associated with gateways or higher activation, higher energy that's coming in, an energetic upgrade, let's say. But they are also the numbers associated with soulmates or twin flame energy, and it's symbolic of the Four of Wands card in Tarot, representing stability in the home and family, peace in the emotional realm. The 18 minutes adds up to nine, which is the number of completion into row and numerology. So isn't it interesting that 18 is also the number of months that it takes for the nodes to transit any particular signs they occupy? In my view, it would seem that this particular full moon is inviting us to do the final cleanup with regard to our emotional responses and reactions, balancing them out with Capricorn's integrity and structure. Earthy Capricorn is really the perfect container for watery Cancer's emotions, and it's all about responsibility, which is literally our ability to respond with integrity and maturity to people in the world around us. And um, in this case, to our family circle, which is represented by cancer. But this is a necessary step before the nodes shift into Aries and Libra, bringing with it relationship upgrades. With a north node in Aries ruled by Mars, we will be called upon to take some form of courageous action, even if it brings up fear. Remembering that to be courageous isn't the absence of fear, it's acting despite any fears we may have. The North Node is our positive direction and destiny, while the South Node in Libra will be sweeping up any unhealthy relationship patterns for the purpose of healing them. Not everyone chooses to be in a significant relationship, but we all still have to evolve the relationship we have with ourselves and how we are showing up for ourselves to nurture and allow greater emotional fulfillment is definitely what's coming up at this time. And then if we choose to interact with another at that level, it won't be two halves trying to make a whole. It will be two mature people not perfect by any means because there is no such thing. We're all evolving, but two people at least at a level of personal integrity who are conscious of their own patterns so that they can support the relationship dynamic and growth process. Just like we have to be in right relationship with ourselves before the external relationship manifests, We also have to take responsibility for overcoming any childhood deficiencies and dysfunctions in terms of our upbringing. No parents are perfect because nobody is perfect, but the proverbial buck stops with us. And that is what I see with this Capricorn Cancer uh, full moon dynamic. But I will be addressing the other aspects in the affirmations and harmonies that follow. So please stay tuned for that. I want to say thank you to the new subscribers and to all who regularly show up in support of this channel. I'm so very grateful to all of you. And for anyone interested, I'm currently taking new clients for astrology readings and astrosonics healing. I've also added a one hour follow up for the astrosonics session if you've already done the initial session with me. So you can visit my website for more details or see the information below this video. As always, wishing you well, and until next time, this is Jennifer. Sun, full moon, and Saturn for the Capricorn full moon. 
Regardless of what has happened in my past, I take full responsibility for my own emotional well-being and release other people from that responsibility, which was never theirs to carry in the first place. Sun, Mercury, and full moon for the conjunction and opposition. I take full responsibility for communicating my emotional needs in a balanced and mature manner that truly supports healing for everyone involved. Sun, Mercury, and Saturn for the trine from Saturn. The universe always provides steady and reliable pathways for me to grow into my highest potential and purpose. Sun, full moon, and Jupiter for the sextile and trine. Expansion and evolution are ongoing in my life and in the world around me. My only job is to relax and trust in that process, knowing that what I need for greater fulfillment is already unfolding, even when that doesn't appear to be the case. Mercury and Chiron for the square. Any tension or stress having to do with my thoughts or communication are simply revealing areas of potential growth and healing. Venus, Mars, and Uranus for the square from Uranus. When sudden shifts and changes occur, I see and respond to them with absolute trust, knowing that the universe has my back every day in every way. Venus, Mars, and Chiron for the trine from Chiron. I recognize the healing taking place between divine masculine and feminine energies in the collective at this time, and I am free to respond to this in ways that align with my highest purpose. Mars and Sedna for the square. I am learning to resolve any need to control situations by staying grounded in nature and listening to the voice within that speaks softly and has no need to defend its position.
Saturn, Mars, and Venus for the sextile and trine to the nodes. Systems that support balance and fairness between seemingly opposite viewpoints are already being established and securing a better future worldwide. Mars and Neptune for the quincunx. I now easily reconcile my overly active or anxious mind with a quiet spirit that intuitively knows all is well. Mm-hmm.